All right, guys, today we are going to be tearing apart a Vortec 2800 four-cylinder engine. Now, I got this specific engine from my buddy Gavin, and it came out of a 2004 Chevy Colorado, where the truck had 150,000 miles, but the previous owner told him that a remanufactured engine was installed around 30,000 miles ago. Usually when I hear that, I believe that something like a head gasket repair or just cylinder head work was done, and the customer believes that that's an engine rebuild, but we'll find out once we dig into it. Now this teardown did not start off very smoothly because this fan clutch was giving me all kinds of trouble. Normally I can knock these off pretty quick with my air hammer, but this one was just rusted solid on there. So I brought out the blowtorch and then some homemade tools and then a giant wrench and then I finally got it off. So I was able to remove the entire wiring harness without breaking any plastic clips. So that's a mini victory for me. Luckily, the power steering pump can be removed with just three bolts, and you don't have to actually remove the pulley to get it out of there. All right, guys, so we are barely into this motor, and I've already found a few interesting things. First off, you've got a nice little crack all the way through our block-off plate here. Next up, our number one cylinder had a pretty good exhaust leak. And then I found this, a remanufactured parts tag. So I guess this block was a reman. There's also a missing bolt that someone lost probably during that engine install and was never able to retrieve. And another thing that's pretty cool, if you look at this casting here, it looks an awful lot like styrofoam. And I don't know a ton about the manufacturing process, but my understanding is that they make a block out of styrofoam and then pack sand around it and then pour the molten aluminum into it, where the styrofoam then sublimates into a gas and then floats away and the aluminum takes its place, creating this kind of funky looking block. Kind of interesting, this is the first engine block I've seen that uses that process. All right, let's keep going. So outside of that fan clutch, there's really no corrosion to speak of. Everything else removed really easily. All right, now that we have the valve cover off, it's time to take a closer look. And let's start with the good. We did not have any leakage into the spark plug holes right here. A lot of times on those polycarbonate gaskets, you'll see oil get from here into the bottom. It can be very annoying. I see that a lot on the modular Fords. We didn't have any of that, nor did we have any leakage from the outside. So that was good. The not so good, the color looks terrible. We don't have a ton of oil buildup, which is nice. There's not a lot of carbon on everything, but the oil looks like whoever changed the oil did not do so very frequently. Now, usually when I pull a valve cover off, the first thing I'll look at is the back of the camshaft because most engines oil from the front to the rear. So if you're going to have oil starvation issue, it usually shows itself on the back of the camshaft, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. You can see the very back one is not looking very good. Nothing too terrible, but it's definitely bad enough that I would not want to reinstall this into my vehicle. So let's keep going. Now I did take a sample of the oil, but I didn't think it was worth the $30 to have Blackstone do an oil analysis. But if you guys are super interested, maybe I'll do that and then I'll release it as a short. All right, I wanna show you guys how I was taught by some old timers how to check for metal in the oil. If you just kind of swirl it around a little bit, you'll usually see what looks like, almost like a galaxy swirling away. It's usually pretty obvious if there's a decent amount of metal in there. There's nothing in this. This oil looks old, but okay. So the removal of this front timing cover was not fun. All of the bolts on the outside have 10 millimeter heads and they came out no problem. Unfortunately, there's a single bolt in the center that has a seven millimeter head and it is extremely shallow. So when I tried to remove it, my socket stripped it almost immediately. I tried a few different ways to remove it, but I eventually had to get the welder out and weld a nut onto the end so that I could unscrew it. And you'll see once this timing cover is off, there's plenty of room to use a larger stud. So they could have just simply used the same size bolts.
Now that we are a little further into this teardown, the engine is giving up more of its secrets. First off, this front timing cover. This is cast directly into the head. I've never seen that. It's an interesting design. The obvious benefit seems like it would be a lot less likely to leak. A lot of times these timing covers do leak. It does, of course, have this lower timing cover. One thing that I did not like was that this timing cover has to be removed after the oil pan. A lot of times you can get the timing cover off without pulling the oil pan, but you can't in this case because the oil pickup tube is attached to it. It looks like we've got ourselves a hydraulic tensioner, which is pretty common. There's probably some little teeth on the inside there, so it uses hydraulic pressure from the oil to push this out, and then the little teeth keep it from retracting back, and that maintains tension on the chain here. The guides look like they're in really good shape. You can see this little nylon section here and here, and then again at the top right there. You do have a couple of plugs in the head here, and as far as I can tell, the only point is so that you can have easier access to the bolt for the tensioners. Now let's go take a look at the oil pan. So this is usually where the largest buildup of sludge is. It doesn't look too terribly bad, but again, it's pretty easy to tell that this motor's been neglected. So I brought the kids out because we are just about to the center of this motor, and I think it's important that they learn how engines work. They were a little bit more interested on playing on the forklift in the background there. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, I did a complete restoration on that forklift and I made a video, so I'll put a link to that in the description below. They make a tool that mounts to the back of the camshafts that locks them in place so that you can remove the gears a little bit easier, but because this is just a quick and dirty teardown, I'm using a crescent wrench to lock the cams into place. So this part is really why the kids are out here. I wanted them to see the pistons in action, and my son wanted to explain to me the difference between Minecraft pistons and real life pistons. All right, now that we've got the cylinder head removed, we can take a look inside the cylinders, and look at how disgusting these look. Just tons of carbon buildup. And although there's a lot of carbon, and they're pretty gross, the cylinder walls actually look pretty good. You can still see the cross hatching. There's a little bit of wear, but nothing too terrible. So let's get this thing flipped over and we'll get these pistons out. All right, up next is removing the crankshaft, but before I do that, I would like to get all of the pistons and the bearings up on the table so that I can remember where they go, and unfortunately, our table is just jam-packed. So if you guys are wondering what I'm going to do with all of this, there are some parts here that are still valuable. Something like this computer, I don't know exactly what it's worth, but I would guess maybe a 100 bucks. I'll sell that on eBay because that's good. This was a running and driving truck. Uh, some things like the mass air sensor, a lot of times getting the sensor new is cheaper than it would be worth to sell it you know with the cost of shipping and all that so if if that sensor is only like 35 bucks then on ebay a used one would probably be like 15 shipping is going to be 16 so something like that it doesn't make a ton of sense sometimes i'll package a bunch of the cheaper stuff together and then i'll just post it up on facebook and see if someone will just take it for free just to save it from the scrapyard sometimes something like this oil pan seems like it's valuable because it's a large cast item but they also never break so if they never break people don't ever need replacements for them so i'll just kind of go through here pick and choose what i'm going to sell what i'm going to make in a big pile to give away for free and then what's going in the trash then we'll have room for all the engine parts all right i've got the table all cleared so i wanted to show you what the piles look like this pile here is going straight into the trash this pile over here is all scrap metal down here, these are some of the parts that I'm saving. This is a good bracket. This is a good adapter for just some hoses. Over here we have some good clamps and then the air conditioning compressor. I save these in case I ever need to use the 12 volt clutch on the front for another project. Up here, this is all the stuff that is either going to be sold or given away. I haven't checked the prices on anything, but just off the top of my head, if I had to guess, I would say I'll probably end up selling the throttle, the computer, and then the exhaust. Uh, everything else 
else is probably not worth selling, but I'll double check that. And so I'll just package that all up. So if anyone needs any of that stuff, let me know. Uh, let's get back to pulling this motor apart. All right, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little stumped as to what's going on back here. I was not expecting anything other than a rear main seal. I've seen components driven off the rear of a drive shaft before, but never anything that looked like this. If this were a diesel engine, I would assume that this was driving like a high pressure oil pump for the injection system. Uh, but this is a gas motor. And as far as I know, this isn't even direct injection gasoline. So I'm going to hop on the internet and figure out what in the world is going on back here. And I'll explain that to you while I disassemble it. So it turns out this is for external engine balancing. This engine came in a four, five, or six cylinder configuration and the four and the five cylinders required external balancing. And I actually had seen something like this before that I had forgotten about. It was an old Perkins diesel engine, but I believe that balancer was ran off the front and it seemed to me like that one was a lot bigger. The balancers on this are like camshaft size. All right, well, we are fully disassembled. Let's take a look at each piece individually and see what we find. The first thing we notice on the crankshaft here is GM decided to use a pin instead of a key on the front. That is a very stupid design. The keys are much stronger. The only benefit to a pin is that it is cheaper to manufacture, but if that pin shears, this engine explodes. And it probably doesn't happen a lot on the low horsepower engines, but it happens a lot on the Duramaxes, and it's just stupid. Looking at the bearing surfaces, you see we do have accelerated wear. Some of it you can feel with your fingernail, some of it you can't. But it is definitely more than we should have on a motor that was rebuilt that we believe only has around 30,000 miles. I would expect this amount of wear on an engine with around 150,000 miles. This is the bearing surface on the other side. You can see a little bit where the wear lines are, and then you can see some of the imperfections from the inside of the metal starting to show. Moving on, I love our guides. They're in fantastic shape. Normally, you see a real thick groove in the nylon from the chain. We don't see that at all. No complaints on the design for this. Love it. The valves are actually looking like they're in pretty good shape with the exception of a pretty extreme amount of carbon buildup. Again, especially for the mileage. If this thing had 150,000 miles, I'd say it's in pretty good shape. But if it really does only have 30, they probably never change the oil. Let me see if I can get a light into the intake. So this is what it's looking like inside. Pretty good, where the fuel actually sprays, keeps it all nice and clean. But the farther out you get, the dirtier it gets. Moving on to the top of the head, we've got our camshafts here. And I am very unhappy with how these wore. Just about every wearing surface we've got is in pretty rough shape. A lot of this you can feel with your fingernail. Here's the bearing caps. You can see the bearings are still working, but just barely. It does have the smallest hydraulic lifters I've ever seen. They look like they belong in the Lego set and not on a vehicle. All right, moving on to the pistons. One thing that I absolutely love, they use a cracked rod setup here instead of a machine surface. You see it's a clean crack. That allows them to save time and money on the machining process, but also end up with a much better product, unlike adding a pin instead of a key to the crankshaft over here. Now there is a tremendous amount of carbon buildup on the tops of all of these pistons. Again, that's probably from a lack of oil changes as well as oil getting in through the PCV system. Let's move on to the block. First of all, I have to say, I absolutely love this styrofoam casting. You see how clean these passages are? It seems like they're able to do a lot more with the design of the block than a traditional sand casting. As for the bearings, they look like they're in really good shape on the block side, with one glaring exception. Do you see this center bearing? 
This is the only one that has a bearing on this side, and it's this side as well as this side here, and that handles the crankshaft play forwards and backwards. Now, because this was made into a manual transmission, every time you push the clutch, it pushed your crankshaft forward, accelerating the wear on this bearing. The solution to this would be to add a second bearing to handle that play, especially if it's going to be mated to a manual transmission. Now, let's get this flipped over and take a look at the cylinders. Overall, I have to say that these cylinders look like they're in pretty good shape. Again, this is one of those things that if it had 150,000 miles, I would say this is fantastic. Given that it's only 30,000, maybe a little bit less fantastic. But overall, yeah, you've got some high spots, you've got some low spots, you have a little bit of discoloration, but you've got pretty good cross hatching all the way around. All right, so what is gonna to happen to all these parts? This block is still in great shape, so I will probably put the crankshaft back into the block. I'll put all the bearings back in the same exact spot, including our balancers and the cradle, and then I will sell this to somebody who will have it properly rebuilt for a second time and then thrown into a vehicle. Uh, these pistons, they're no good, so I will probably use these for some type of artwork. I like to make those into lamps. For the head over here, I'll probably put this all back together. Again, make sure everything's in the exact spot. All of the bearing caps, the little roller rockers, the hydraulic lifters, the camshafts. Make sure everything's right back where it needs to be. I'll wrap this up and sell it. This will go to a cylinder head shop. They'll resurface it. They'll do a leak down check. They'll make this thing good as new, and then that can go in someone else's vehicle. And I guess that's it. So this was my first engine autopsy video. I'm hoping to make a series out of this. So let me know in the comments section below if you liked it. And if you did, what engine you'd like to see me tear down in the future. Because just around the shop right now, I've got an old Continental inline four from the forklift. I also have an inline six 223 Ford that was left outside with no valve covers. So it got filled to the top with water. So that one's probably disgusting inside. And I would love to pull these motors apart, see what worked and see what didn't work inside, see what still had a little life to it and see what was hanging on by a thread so let me know what you think otherwise take care see you guys later thanks for watching everybody bye bye